Welcome back to Unraveled Game Thoughts. I have a fairly unique game today called Legends of the Void. Thank you, Caleb and Cassie, for allowing me to borrow and try out this game. If you're familiar with Terraforming Mars, you might say this is like Terraforming Mars in a fantasy setting. <clears throat> That's not going to be a pure description. It's just close and I'll use terraforming Mars as a little bit of a, a rubric for some of the different things uh, I'll be doing in the game so I'll describe the layout here what you see I don't know that this is the perfect layout this is just how I did it to get it on camera and I have everything set up for my game or at least to get started I think at the beginner level there's a good chance I made some mistake here, but I have my rule book here if I need to reference it. And I am largely just trying to show you how the game works. So this is one I'm probably not quite as concerned about getting everything just right. I've also got a player aid off to the side here you probably can't see, which is really helpful on the turn by turn, remembering what I can do each turn kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> what do we have? Uh, I've got my um, beat beer joining me today for this playtest. This is a Beers Beats Battlestar Galactica. That is the name of this beer. It's by Martin House, which is kind of one of our local Texas breweries. I really only bought that beer because I thought, well, one, it's that's from the office. Beats beer beats. Beers, Beats, Battlestar Galactica. It's one of the the lines from the office, and I just thought a spiced beet sour has got to be terrible, but I've got to try it because it sounds so interesting. And it's not as bad as I would have thought. I don't know that I'm a beet fan, but it's not a bad beer. So anyway. Let's jump into what things are here, and I'll try to go left and right, left to right here as much as I can. Uh, actually, I'll start in the center. So this is the main board. Each of these, there are six panels that make up the main board, and this disc in the middle kind of uh, locks, kind of locks them in to place for all intents and purposes. This middle represents represents the void, and then. The, the these are double sided and so you there's a deck of cards that you randomly draw from to determine which side but on in a beginner game which is kind of what I set it up as you there are certain I think three of these that have a beginner side so I'm using the beginner side for these I've pretty much tried to do everything sort of beginner for all intents and purposes just to make life easier on myself and why is this here. Oh, that's because that's extra. I don't need it. Thought I misplaced that. So main board and to describe a few things on the board, like Terraforming Mars, you kind of hexes. A couple of the hexes are uh, crossover hexes. They are hexes that form between two land areas. Each land area is fairly distinct. Uh, some of these hexes have dedicated spaces that you put a void on. Some of them have a place called, there's these hexes called Nahil, which you may, I don't know how much you can see it there. I'm trying to hold it up to this camera a little bit. You might be able to see that. And that is basically the kind of land type that the Seraphs, which are our bad guys we're fighting in here, are going to kind of poop out they kind of like go along their path and they poop it out as they go and they create both voids which are these uh purple ones and they create the nihil and which are basically like kind of dead land so then there's a there's a couple of other random ones like there is uh, i'll try i'll get one of the tiles here this is called viate whenever i create one of those myself i will put my own marker on it there are sigils I think is what it's called a sigil which is when you when you turn when you eliminate a void token it becomes a sigil and when you eliminate uh, Nahil it will become a 
uh, Wasteland, which is sounds like it'd be bad, but it's actually good in this game to have those. And then we have our Strongholds, which is the backside of the Viete. But uh, you build strong. You, I think you can build strongholds. That's uh, you might only be able to build them here. I never built or got close to building a stronghold in the first game, so uh, we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there. If I get a card or something that does it, then you have these flags, which are I'll hold that up to the screen. It's basically you can sort of reserve a land to be built upon later, and if you you got to build a you got basically a, a, put a flag down. And then if it's not something that you're turning into something else with a card or whatnot, then you use that flag and then you can build something on top of that flag and turn it into Stronghold or a Viete or something of that nature. Um, what else do we have? I think that's sort of a mix of the board here. There's some spaces on the board that do various things, but I'll speak to those as they happen in the game that makes more sense and i don't know that i'll play a full game i'm going to play a round or three and we'll kind of see you'll get a gist of how the game goes and can decide if you like it or not over here on the left i'm not sure if i captured all of them but there are the three serif cards the serifs are on the board here and they are i want to say they're randomly placed not really randomly placed uh only in the sense that a random serif will be placed to some degree on each of these three spots and then you flip over a void card and that serif moves a little bit creating voids in the hill as it goes we have these uh, this is the void deck here and there are seven I guess they're called basic void events there's some more advanced void events and you have the very last card and when that's revealed if you haven't won the game you lose the game and the void erupts so it would have to uh i think that last card can potentially do some damage to the seraphs and if you ended up in a situation where all the seraphs took enough damage to kill in the last turn then you could theory in theory win <clears throat> the game i played i wasn't even close so that probably wouldn't be an option then it probably won't be an option this time all right <clears throat> So the Seraph cards, these are the uh, starting Seraphs. <clears throat> Each one's going to start at 9, which is the designating start, designated start value for a uh, beginning player. At the top of the Seraph, there's a card here that's called their scroll card, their secret scroll card. You can potentially steal that from them, and it can become a card that you can use and play. I'm going to try to create some, uh, I'll move this instruction book, I'm going to try to create some room over here that I can play cards for myself so that I can see them more regularly. Uh, I don't really have space right in front of me, which would probably be more ideal, but I want to be able to see my character card so I can keep in mind what it is I'm able to do with my character. Uh, one of the things that's easy to forget. So the secret's goal, but you got to meet the qualifications, the, the weakness. Every, every Seraph has a weakness, and I think you have to meet the qualifications of the weakness or have a number of tags, perhaps, plus a number of other qualifications in a given area to be able to steal the card, and you have to be next to the Seraph also. So there are, it, I would say stealing the cards are pretty difficult. I didn't even try in the first game, nor was I in position to really even attempt to do so. The, uh, the Seraphs themselves, if you're going to fight them directly, and fighting them directly means going up alongside of them and just trying to hit them with kind of a direct hit, you have to meet the qualifications of their weakness, and you have to be able to have enough uh, hits to overpower their shield with the exception of you, there, each of them has a shield weakness that you can, like, if you pay a certain type of resource for one, you can eliminate their shield that way. This one is a different type of resource. This one's you got to lose a scroll, and you can get rid of their shield in these ways. Otherwise, you have to have power beyond their shield to actually do damage. And each hero starts with a certain power they have, but it's way below the shield. Like, mine's one. We got a shield of five, five, four. So nine times out of ten, I'm going to want to eliminate their shield with a resource and then try to do damage to them if I can. 
Um, and I have to have at least two of this resource plus play a third in order to eliminate the shield for this first hero. And then I think I need to sacrifice a life scroll, possibly. Or oh, that's if they do damage to me. That's what happens. So there are kind of their, their deals. Each, each one's aligned with a certain symbol. And when I flip a void card, there will be all three symbols on there. But the first symbol on the left is the one that activates that particular hero. There's several of these cards in the game that you randomly select to build the void deck at the beginning of setup. And they're also going to curse me, which means they're going to either make me lose a scroll that I played, or they're gonna, I'm going to have to heal one of them each time that they activate. Uh, next to the Seraphs, we have the Lumen Board, and that is sort of measures my income, you would say. Uh, in Terraforming Mars, this would be what would constitute your, I think, Terraform rating is what it was called. And as it goes up, you have more uh, for a beginning player and playing a, I'm playing a starting faction, which means kind of like not really a faction, it's just a starting setup. I'm just starting at 17. Um, I used a starting character and there's another random faction out here, but that is just for the purposes of a random faction for the game. I just put a stronghold out for them. I think it's just so that certain cards can interact as needed. There's another fella over here or over there that's a random hero. Uh, and again, you don't do anything with that. So as far as overhead, that's not too bad on the single single player version of the game. Up above here, we have at the beginning of every round, you're gonna draw a scroll. So I'm gonna have to pick one of these at the beginning of the first round. And I believe, uh, ooh, do I get stuff right away? You do the spring draft. We have standard actions, uh, gather, fight, mana cycle. Let's see, one of these probably has the, uh, you technically have seasons that you go through. So spring is draft, summer is actions. And then we have autumn, mana cycle, production. So the very last thing you do in autumn is you grab this, uh, it's like Gift of Lumen is what it's called. And if you're familiar with like Res Arcana, it kind of works like that where at the end of it, when you're done and you're ready to pass, you you get one, you, you put one back and you gain one. And so you can't get the same one two times in a row. And I just can't remember if uh, I start the game with one. I kind of okay so we kind of do everything else and we pick our lumen blessing last which is that makes sense um off to the right side here you can't see it but i have um what essentially constitutes the money in the game very much like terraforming mars cubes you have uh 10 5 and 1 and they are in bronze gold and silver wooden cubes so nothing terribly fancy i think terraforming mars has like plastic cubes um, what else do we have here? This is a random, this is the random hero we drew. Uh, there might be cards that reference it, but otherwise I'm not really going to pay much attention to it. These are our Lumen Blessings that we'll trade out, kind of like Res Arcana. This is a, lit, uh, a stack of the Lumen Scrolls. Now, I've already drawn, for a single player game, you draw 10, and you're gonna, we're going to pick uh, what we want from those 10 uh, and have to pay for each one we keep. And then there's Gift Scrolls, from which we get to draw uh, one, two, three, four, five. Why did I give myself more than five? I'm supposed to have uh, five of those, and from those I will get to pick two, I believe, that I get to keep. Again, I will check, I will double check the solo to make sure I'm doing that right, but I do believe I get basically the same number I just get uh, yeah five instead of four for the gift scrolls ten instead of eight for the lumen scrolls I can buy whichever scrolls I want and for the gift scrolls I just get two to start with it's like two free cards that you don't have to pay for for all intents and purposes um, 
And this is my player board. Now, these player boards are better than the Terraforming Mars player boards. Uh, each of the sections holds the type of resource that you can create. So we can create gold, which is our money in the game. We start out at a rating of one. We can create hero resource. And why do I have mine? I think because mine should be on zero. Hero, hero resource. Oh, because my character gives me one extra hero resource as a starting thing, which is pretty good. That's what you need. You need hero resource to do the basic actions in the game. Moving, fighting the Seraph, uh, things, uh, general things like that. Now, you pay other resources to do a lot of the other actions in the game, but just your general move, creating an outpost, things of that nature, you generally need a hero resource. Um, so it runs out quickly. Uh, I've got a one mithril mana production. So that is that, and I forgot if I actually produce in the first cycle uh, of the game. Let me check the player setup and see if we do a production cycle right out of the gate. That would make a huge difference. Uh, background, oops. set up your hero, draft a lumen, give scrolls. Um, Produces res yep, you produce resources. Okay, Lumen Blessing, and then we begin with Summer. Okay, so we are going to produce, re produce resources before we start. Um, mana, and mana deteriorates, so it turns into Dark Matter at the end of a round, uh, after you've passed and you get to that stage, and then it turns into something called a Gesai. And the Gesai you actually can use to create the VAT, uh tokens put them on the board and but it takes seven of them to do that so it takes some time to really get that going uh, unless you can get your resources built up pretty fast so uh my character ability i'll talk about that real quick and then start drafting cards and we'll go from there all right my character ability is if my hero is next to in the hill which is that those black uh, spaces i was uh, talking about earlier I can spend the mana and three Genasai, I guess that's what it's called, and scorch that in the hill. It's called scorching the hill when you turn it into a wasteland. So basically I can do that cheaper. It normally would take seven, I think seven mana to scorch the hill, or seven, it takes seven dark matter to scorch the hill typically. And uh, in this case I can do it for a mana and three Ganassi and Scorched in the Hill. Uh, and whenever I Scorch in a Hill, I gain one hero resource. So Scorching the Hill is a good way for me to get that going. All right. <clears throat> My movement is two. If I spend a hero point, I can basically move two spaces. And one of the things to bear in mind is that whenever I control a space, so I'm starting over here, uh, I actually get to move. Um, I can teleport to places I control. I only control those three at the beginning of the game, so that is not going to have much bearing at the onset. But uh, later in the game, if I have more areas that I've created and control on the board, then I will be able to move a little bit more, or basically teleport around. So I'm going to look at these gift scrolls. They're not going to cost me anything. I just get to play them. And there's a couple of things I'm looking at. One is the tags. Just like Terraforming Mars has tags, this game has tags. And, you know, let's just say they're called different things. There's mithril tags, tinker tags, arcane tags, animal tags, hero tags. You know, there's, I think, as many as there are in Terraforming Mars, they have them in here. One of the things I ran into in the first game, and I think this is probably a detriment to the solo version of the game, I would guess that in a multiplayer game, especially with three and four players, there's a distinct advantage to the fact that you draft... The cards every round. Um, in the beginning of the game, I would have if I had even though I'd only have four of these. If there were three other players, I would draft. I'd pick one and pass them around. So by the time I select the two I want, I am picking from among the four best cards that I was able to draft, which is a lot better advantage than just drawing five and picking one. A little bit more of a disadvantage. So we've got a water mill. This will increase gold and mana production one step. 
and for each lumen scroll in hand I gain one gold. That's not bad. And then we have a Bucophallus, which is an animal. Uh, if I'm next to a Seraph, I can fight with plus one power, and this increases my hero production one step. That one's not bad either. I like both of those. Uh, we have a Metal Strength. Gain five Mithril and five Dark Matter. Not bad. That's a very immediate benefit, and that won't have any long-term effect beyond giving me a little bit of a boost at the beginning of the game. Now, Mithril can be used in place of three gold, so it's kind of like the uh, steel and uh, titanium from Terraforming Mars. But only, like it's kind of like both combined. It's just three right out of the gate. You don't have to do anything to make it worth that. It does not use for certain tags. It's just anytime you need three gold, you could use a mithril instead. All right, so this one, we could increase our gold and mithril production one step each and gain five gold. That's not bad. I like the ones that increase my production. And then this one, we can place an outpost next to another player's stronghold, steal up to four gold from that player, and increase gold production three steps. That's not bad either. Uh, I can't remember what, I think it's an Arcana tag. I can't remember the name of that particular tag there. So we got a lot of good options here. I'm pretty sure I am not going to do the, uh, and I'm going to put that in a discard just in case you can draw a gift card. I think gift cards are only at the beginning of the game, but just in case they're not. So golden mana production plus uh, increased golden mana production one step for each thing scroll in hand, gain one in gold. The question is, that's just a one-off, that watermill? I would think that that's like a draft. I would guess during the draft, because otherwise, as a gift scroll, it would be kind of silly. Not, not nearly as helpful. Um, now, I'm thinking that's every draft you get one for, you might get a gold for every one in your hand. And we have this one, increase hero production one step. I really like that because hero production is extremely helpful in this game. So that's probably, plus that gives me a, a little bit of fight power. I really like that one. And this increases gold and mithril production and gives me five gold right away. I think I'm going to do those two and drop these. I like that one, but I'm not 100% sure about the when that would, uh, the water mill would go. And there might be a, uh, they had some, some stuff uh, in here, water mill. When you play the scroll, gain one gold for each lumen scroll in your hand when you play it. The three gold acquisition cost for each lumen scroll is paid before. Oh, you cannot use the income from gift scrolls to play the three gold acquisition. So technically your gift scrolls are supposed to be played after we've decided on these. Well, I'm probably going to stick with these, but let's look and see what we got here. Uh, we have a spring well. At the beginning of spring, you can add one scroll to your drafting hand before draft begins. If you do, discard one to return to four scrolls. Hmm. And that allows us to gain two resources of our choice, but we have to spend, it uh, cost us two mithril to play it, and immediately gives us two resources of choice. That's, that's okay. Uh, that's not, not terrible. Um, the Great Furnace, we can sacrifice another scroll and gain two Dark Matter. Increases gold production two steps. You place the Great Furnace tile next to one of your strongholds. Well, that's not awful. Uh, you have to sacrifice another scroll to gain two Dark Matter. And I don't really care about the Dark Matter piece. That's an ongoing ability. 
but I like the increased gold production. I probably put that ahead of the spring well for now. Reverse flow engine, if we spend a mana, a dark matter, and a Genesai, we may ignore the next curse. Ooh, a dark matter, uh, a mana, and a Genesai, and we can ignore a curse. That's not bad. Place the engine tile, this is an engine, over your sigil and decrease mithril production one step to deal and deal one damage to each seraph. Well, that's a global damage to each seraph. That's awfully hard to pass. I might have to buy that one. Ascension. Uh, for each of your Eternals tags, gain one Genesai, travel to any area of the Outer Lands, increase hero production one step. Ooh, I really like that one. And we have, well, we don't have any Eternals tags noted right now, but it still seems like a reasonably good card. Art of War, after you fight, gain one Dark Matter. Mm, decrease gold production one step, increase hero production one step. That kind of fits with maybe some other options that we have. So I will keep that as an option. Cutthroats. Spend one mithril. I probably will have one. Uh, steal one step of gold production from that player. Oh, hero is on another player's stronghold. I have to get somebody else's stronghold to do that. That one, even though it's a zero cost card, I'm not real keen to try to shoot for it. Uh, I can the medium. I can spend one mana, reveal the top three scrolls of the draw pile for each spirit or creature tag revealed. I can add one spirit to one of my scrolls and discard all revealed scrolls. Okay. Um, that cost me mana. That's not terrible, but it's probably not going to be high on my list. Uh, summoner, Summer Snow, need a base event is on top of the Void deck. Okay. Pass, then clockwise all players must pass in game. Half LP for each of your Chaos Tags. Uh, I don't think I'm playing with Chaos Tags, so I'm actually going to discard that one. And because I'm not playing with Chaos Tags that I'm aware of, I'm going to draw this as a replacement. All right, so hero is swallowed up by the void, gain one resource of choice and dig. Hmm. That's interesting. That seems terrible. So we're going to say no to that. Probably say no to those two. Summer of love. For each of your creature tags, gain one goodness eye and add one creature to one of your scrolls. Well... I don't have creature tags really formulating here, so that might not help me much. Word, ward of Law. Other players cannot manipulate your gold resources and production, and when you play a case, Chaos Tag, sacrifice this roll. Well, I'm not playing with Chaos Tags, uh, but I'm probably not going to draw another one. So I'm just going to discard those, because I'm pretty sure I'm not using those. This one's pretty interesting, the Summer of Love one creature but do I want to buy it it's a life tag I feel like these over here were more valuable and that's gonna cost me 12 so I'm gonna go pay those 12 and these cards are gonna go into my hand and now I've purchased those so now I have selected my my cards here and I'm going to increase my gold and my mithril production one step and I'm going to gain five gold which is pretty handy and these tags we're just going to play on top of each other uh, this one actually has an ongoing effect so I'll leave it there uh, hero next to a it's a plus one fight increase hero production one step that's very good uh, it did have an animal tag, which leads me to think maybe I should have bought that one over there. But I'm going to pass for now. So now we're going to do production. And we're going to gain two more 
gold, we're going to gain two more hero points. We'll gain two mithril. And we'll gain two mana. And that's going to be all that we get for production. And now i got to get my blessing. And... You know, I'm going to go... I'm going to take a step. I'm going to go back and I'm going to say I'm going to get that card. Because I think it would have been beneficial. And... I don't know that I'm going to play it this round, but I think it's going to be useful later in the Outer Land. So my Lumen Blessings are kind of buried here. Sacrifice one scroll, gain a resource of choice, gain two mithril, one gold and one gun, gun aside, and an animal tag. You may add one creature to one of your scrolls, and one spirit to one of your scrolls. Sacrifice a scroll, increase mana production one step. Lots of options here. Um, mm. Hmm. I don't know if that's technically an animal. Uh, each of my Eternals tags and gain one resource of my choice. Um, one I try, oh, where is it? Okay. Gold and increase hero production one step. That's not bad. Um, great furnace, increase gold production. Two steps next to one of your tiles. That's probably what I'm going to try to play right out of the gate. Reverse engine. So the question is, what am I going to need? What am I going to need? Um, what am I going to need? Uh, mithril might be beneficial for this round. So I'm gonna do that. That's gonna give me two mithril and I have a mithril tag for this round. So we'll do that and then we'll start. Now I have to play, pay, I'm not probably scorching any in the hill. I'm starting over here. So I'm in a fairly significant area, but I'm gonna play, I'm gonna go ahead and pay 16 so I'll pay all of these, and I'm going to play the Great Furnace. And that is going to increase my gold production too. And I place the Great Furnace, which is, there's these tiles over here. So if you're familiar with, in Terraforming Mars, you have some of those special tiles that you can put out in the game um, based on certain cards. This has a similar impact. And so this goes on to uh, next to one of my strongholds. Well, I have a stronghold here. <clears throat> so the question is really, where do I want it? Do I want something that gives me gold? Which is probably not going to help me at all this round. But uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14. Not impossible. Uh, area in the outer lands. Hmm. I don't have any of those. That's not going to be terribly helpful right out of the bat. But this one might. Um, it gives me gold. And having this uh, NSI is awfully good. So I'm going to go, since I'm building it on a place that has NSI, it's going to give me one of those. So I'm going to take that. And then... Do I want to move? Now, the hero resources, if I don't use them, they're they're just gone. Um, so I do want to use them. The problem is going to be I don't have a lot of areas to use them because to get rid of a void, 
I have to have seven mana, and I don't have seven mana, nor am I going to have seven mana this round. So I'm really just building up effects for all intents and purposes. But I think pay, playing this one, three, six, nine, 12. So I'm going to end up paying one more than I normally would, but I can uh, play this card, which will, oh, it's actually got an ongoing effect. So we'll stick that up there for now. And what this card does, after I fight, I gain a dark matter. Not bad, but it, it decreases my production there and increases my hero production, which will be useful later. Um, Hero-wise, what do I want to do? Now, if I gather on... Um, there's like a thing here. If I gather on certain areas, I get certain things. So right now, if I was to gather where I'm at, probably uh, two gold. Hmm. If I gather, I can't gather on those things. So do I move? I could gather uh, Genesi, which is not terrible. But I don't know how helpful it is. Um, do I gather gold? Or do I move? It's a tough choice. Tough choice. I'm not going to fight yet. I'm not ready to. Um, to build an outpost. Oh man, I can't remember how to build an outpost. Uh, on your outpost. Where your hero is. It's just a hero action, I guess, to build an outpost on a place. Um, so probably we will we'll use a hero a hero action and we'll go one. And I'm not going to gather. I'm going to use my next two hero actions and I will build an outpost here and an outpost here. That's what we'll do. And that is going to be all of that. So, end of my turn, I am going to pass. Now, let me double check my pass action here. I think summer. Uh, I can travel, now it's gone, escape from the void, fight, seize a secret, which I'm not doing, gather, um, I'm not doing that, play the most one in unique action, yep, and then we are moving on to autumn, so we're going to do the mana cycle, which means all dark matter goes to the Genesai, and Mana goes to Dark Matter. Then we do Production. So right now I'm at 17 plus 18, 19, 20. So I'm going to get 20 gold. I'm going to get three Hero Cubes. And Hero Cubes disappear at the end of the round if you don't use them. So that's an important, important feature to be aware of uh, when you're going from round to round. Uh, he would rotate player, but I'm playing solo, so it doesn't matter. So then I take this and put it back, and I pick another one. And I think, well, I might go after animal tags. Who knows? Gain one gold, one gonna sign. I'm gonna go ahead and gain this. I'll have two animal tags that way, and that gives me. Uh, well, you get those. You get those when you trade. Uh, yeah, when you trade them. So I'm gonna get one gold and one gonna say. Yep. That is what is happening there, and we will move on to a void event. So this is how the void event work, works. We turn a card over, and we're gonna see which one to activate. It's gonna be this middle purple one which is, this is the one that has that symbol. I'm um, looking to the one on the left. So he's gonna move in this direction. Now he's gonna, he wants to turn this way once. So he wants to turn there 
and he wants to go there. He's going to drop a void in his wake, and then he's just going to go straight twice. Uh, he's going to end up there, ultimately, and he's going to drop some of this here uh, in the hill as he goes. And so those are spaces that are taken up now. Hmm. Okay. Forgive me, i got to keep up so I pick up a kid on time today. All right. Uh, and he's going to curse me. So the act of Sarah curses you. Now, I normally would lose a lumen rating or I would have to give up a scroll, but I don't want to give up my scrolls because the tags are important. Um, or, and, and so I have to heal a Seraph otherwise. Now that Seraph is coming toward me. He's probably the one I might want to damage first, but I'll let him heal because I think he's most likely to be the one that I damage first. Um, all right. So now we do the spring draft and I'm going to draw four cards and I can purchase them if I want. And that's, that's it. That's another disadvantage with the solo is you just draw four cards. That's it. So if you don't get the tags that you need or want, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, if you have a draft with other players, it's a little bit more likely that you'll get the cards you need. So we've got sacrifice five centaurs from here, bloom a Vietti in a region where you already own a Vietti. That's actually pretty good, uh, especially if I have that other one that lets me add tags to a thing. Cave Worm, uh, spend two hero resources. Hero's gotta be next to a portable, a portal. Increase mithril and hero production, one step each. Place the worm tile on a mountain of the outer lands and then travel to the worm tile. Ooh, I kind of like that. That's a neat card. Soul Net. Hero's got to be next to a Neil and the heel. Add two spirits among your scrolls and dig. Eh. eh, I don't have any spirit cards, so I don't think I care about that one as much. Place one Dark Matter. Uh, spend one Dark Matter. Place an outpost on a mountain. I don't know. Uh, how valuable that is. Increase mithril and mana production one step. Oh, that's not bad. I do like that. So I will keep those. I'm going to discard that one and I'll spend nine for these. Uh, and that doesn't give me much to work with. But that's what I got. So moving right along, let's see what we can do. We have uh, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18 at best mana here. So we're not doing a lot. Um, I have to have a life and uh, one of these other tags. There's three different tags here I have to have. A life tag and the sum of Chaos and Law Tags, which they are in the deck. I guess Chaos Tags, I guess we always play with Chaos Tags. But I don't have any of those yet in play. And that's too expensive. I'm going to say 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16, 18. So this one is an option. I can spend the Dark Matter to place an outpost on a mountain. Doesn't say I have to be next to the mountain, I just place an outpost on a mountain. I like that. I like that a lot. Seventeen to do that. That's not gonna happen for each of your creature tags. This one I wanna play later. Uh, for each of your Eternals tags, I need more Eternals tags. So this one's probably the one we're gonna try to play. Uh, we've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, well, technically 18, but I would use it that way to be more efficient. And that allows us to place a outpost on a mountain. We'll do that. And I can spend one, well, I had to spend one dark matter to do that. That is totally fine with me. And 
I can increase my mithril and mana production, which is really why I want to do that, is just to get those production values up a little higher. Uh, now, can I, I'm probably not gonna be able to do anything else. I don't have three Yenisei to do anything there. Uh, I can move, I can fight, I can gather. I could gather gold, I suppose. But I don't know that I want to. Um, I can move. Uh, I can place outposts. Um, moving is maybe one of the better options, and I can move. Um, One, two, and then let's move again, but we'll stop there, and then let's gather, and that'll give us three uh, gold. Uh, that's probably our best bet for this round. That's all we can do. We draw a Nihil card, and this time we're activating this guy. He's facing away. He is going to drop a, he's gonna drop a void and then he is going to turn this way and drop the hill behind him. Now he can't go here, so he's going to turn and go here. And he's going to, that's how, that's, he always turns in the direction of the orientation on his, on his card there. So he ends up going there. Uh, but he can't go into these spaces, or he does. He chooses not to, and he chooses not to go there. If he ever, if any of the seraphs end up in a situation where they can't move anywhere, that they, they do what's called they disappear, and they reappear at the kind of the next area or cross section over, and the place where they disappear from ends up creating a bunch of void and whatnot. So it's usually a, a bad thing when they disappear; does more damage than we want it to. So that is when I forgot to uh, put this back um, last time when I passed. And I think one creature to one of your scrolls. Uh, I don't have a creature to add yet. Outposts, sacrifice one scroll. I'm gonna get this guy. Um, I don't want to sacrifice the scroll to gain one resource, so I think I'm just going to not do that. I won't gain the resource, but I will have an Eternals tag, which may help me. And then I do the mana cycle, boom, boom, like so, and I do production, which is going to be, uh, what do I got, 3, 17, 20 um, for production. Oh, and they curse me which would have healed this, I'm gonna heal that Eternal. I'll just focus on the one and hope that I can eventually do some damage to him. All right, so I got my production there. I'm gonna get three hero resources. I'm gonna get three mithril. And I'm gonna get three mana. So we've got a little bit more mana to work with. We've got a little bit more genocide to work with. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, let's see what happens. All right. Um, oh, got to do a draft. All right. One, two, three, four. Get our cards. All right. Summer Bloom. Spend three dark matter. Gain Genesai equal to your mana production. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's a pretty good one. Uh, sacrifice two owls from here and place an outpost in the outer lands. Eh. Increase gold production one step. That one's okay. I'm not real excited about it. Spend one mana. May ignore the next curse. For a mana. Ignore a curse for a mana. Wow. That's kind of nice. Uh, I might do that. Um... Restless Curse. Spend one mana, share a region with another hero. We'll have to get over there. 
steal hero of production from that player, decrease your OR. It's just one hero of production. I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm going to discard those two, and I will pay six for these, which gives me uh, four back. Done. And let's see what we can do here. Hmm. We've got... Ooh. I like this cave worm. Um, one step, place the worm tile on a mountain of the outer lands. And travel to the worm tile. I really like the cave worm. <laughs> Spend two hero resources to do it. And I can travel to the outer lands. Hmm. And then this, uh, but I need these to do that, which is going to take some time. Uh, I like the engine. Whoa, but I have an Eternals tag, so I technically could do this one. 19, 21, 22. I could do this. Spend one mana, one dark matter, and one good side, and ignore the next curse. So I can always do that for every curse. Place the engine over your sigil. Own at least one Eternals tag. Place the engine over your sigil. Decrease mental production one step and, and deal one damage to each Seraph. Man, that is awfully good. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. So that's 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, 19, 20, 21. I'm going to do that. Um, make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, I have an Eternals tag. It's part of the reason I got this Eternals tag. I got to spend one mana, one dark matter, and one uh, Genesai. Oh, oh, that's that's if I'm using the card. That's not playing it. That's just using it. Uh, I own the Eternals tag. I place the engine over my sigil. So I need to find the tile with this engine here, which I have, and it goes over my sigil, so it's gonna go here. And I basically created an engine, and I have to decrease my mithril production, which is a little bit sad, but I deal one damage to each Seraph. And the reason that is so good is because when e whenever a Seraph takes a damage, I gain a Lumen rating. One, two, three. So I'm going to gain those three, and as long as I have those three resources, I could spend them to keep the next curse from happening, which is rather fantastic. Now, I don't have enough to do that. I could do this. I could spend the mana to ignore the next curse without having to worry about it top of the Void Event deck. Um, that's not bad. Five, uh, three, four, five, six. Six is the best I'm going to get from that. I am on a place where I could gather, and by gathering, I could gain three of those. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now I'm at nine. Um... I could get up to 12. Well, Summer Bloom, gain Genesai equal to your mana production. Now, I think I'm going to gather again, uh, spend a hero resource and gather, because I really want to build up my uh, what I'm doing here. And I'm going to spend my last hero resource, and I'm going to gather one more time so that I have what I need for the next round because I want to do some stuff next round. And my Lumen rating went up because I did the damage to the Seraphs. I am also going to play... This one cost me... I can spend one mana, and I have to spend five. So I'll just spend... Uh, I'll spend these five. No, yeah, I'll spend those five. And I'm going to play this. And that's going to give me 
and play it on this card that I have. Don't need to do it. So I can ignore the next curse, what that lets me do. So that's my mana I spent. I get to ignore the next curse. It's very valuable to me. Um, we're gonna let that go. I am gonna get this animal tag, which is gonna give me, uh, before I do anything, I'm gonna let my mana cycle go. And then I'm gonna get a Genesai and a gold. And then I will produce, so we'll get three of those, two of those, three hero. Three hero. And we get 23 of the, uh, of the gold. All right, so there's my 23. And then we're gonna do the next deal. We're forgetting the curse. This guy, this guy is going to go. So he is gonna move forward, drop one of these. He is going to turn this way and he is gonna move, uh, he's gonna end up moving two and dropping two in the hill. And this fella is right next to me. So, and we dropped a hit in the hill next to me. So maybe I will have some options here. We'll have to see. But the curse doesn't impact me because of my card, so I will take it, and then we will draft four cards. Uh, one, two, three, four. All right, the gladiator, spend one hero resource and fight with plus three power. Cost 27, and I have to spend two hero resources to play this, deal two damage to a seraph in the hero's region, one LP at end game. Hmm. That's not bad. That's a pretty good card. Tree of Life. Uh, spend five. Gonna sigh. Uh, need own at least five life tags. Hero is on your Viate. Set hero production at one. Sacrifice all hero scrolls, convert all your hero resources into one Gasai each, and two damage to, to a Seraph. That seems really hard. Uh, I'm not going to mess with that one. It's probably really good, but <laughs> I don't want to think it through right now. Uh, spend one hero resource. Heroes on another player's outpost. Steal that outpost. I don't care about stealing an outpost from the other hero. Uh, although it does have a tag I like. Um, does have one of those tags that I like. So maybe I will get it for that tag. Sacrifice two Darklings and Dig. Uh, I've never found Digging to be terribly helpful. Basically, Digging lets you, oh, place in a hill over your Sigil. So you got to cover a Sigil of yours. That's not going to be helpful. So I'll, I'll, I'll go with those six. I'll pay, I'll pay six for these two. Gives me some options. Um... I have to be on another hero's outpost for that one. This one's good, but I think it's too expensive for now. Even though I could afford it, I don't want to just yet. I still need three dark matter for that. Uh, and I could gain Genesis to my mana production, but I'm not going to do that yet. The cave worm is very tempting. The Centaur's Glade is very tempting, but I need a Life Tag and a Chaos Tag, I believe, in order to do that one. Summer of Love, now I have one, two, three Animal Tags. For each of my Creature Tags, I would gain one Genesai and add one Creature to one of my Scrolls. Well. I need to get a. I need to get a, a creature scroll and play. So I would need. Um, oh, I have to be next to a portal for that one. Shoot. So did I have another creature tag? 
Summer Bloom, Sunstroke Glade. But I need a life tag for that. Um, now, if I played the life tag, I would have two of those tags. Oh, that's tough. I might end up going with the Cave Worm. Um, I can't do anything. Gain one Gasai, an hour land, if you show production one step. I don't have any of those tags right now. I don't think I have a creature that I would add a creature to the scroll. So that's not going to be terribly... The Summer of Love is not effective yet. I probably need to get another creature. And I have to get next to a portal for this and send two hero resources. A mountain of the Outer Lands and travel with the Worm Tile. Um, man, that's tough. I really want to do a damage to uh, Genocide. But I think this is going to be a good setup for later. Potentially. Um, so, let's pay... Pay our 19. Let's see how much we can do here. Pay our 19. Well, actually, and before I even do that, I have to be next to a portal. So I'm going to go to that portal. I am next to a portal. Um, increase mithril and hero production one step each. i got to spend two hero resources. Hero is next to a portal. I accomplished that. Increase mithril and hero production one step each. That's very worthwhile. Place the worm tile on a mountain of the outer lands. All right. Of the outer lands. Okay. First of all, we have to find the worm tile. It's the last one, of course. Uh, so it's got to be a mountain of the outer lands and then travel to the worm tile. Uh, now, is he going to get anywhere near me? That is questionable. I don't want him to, but I also want to be so far away that I have to uh, deal with something. So I'm going to go here to this part of the Outer Lands. It also gives me a thing that I can teleport to. I think I'm going to actually go here. Um, See if we can get lucky there. And then I'm teleporting here because I can teleport back to my own things as I need to uh, when I move. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. And then I have this guy. Uh, that's all he does. He's just a cave worm. Uh, that's interesting. It's like a, it's like a beast that does uh, not much else for me right now, but it gives me a, a, a place to go pretty quickly. Um, I guess the theory is I'm going through the wormhole. Uh, all right, so I can spend one Dark Mountain, place an outpost on a mountain. That's kind of cool. That didn't say I have to be next to the mountain. Hmm. Three Gasai and a mana. Have to be next to Nahil. Now, if I had put this on a mountain next to Nahil, that would have been ideal. Actually, and I might even consider instead of putting it where I did, I think I'm going to do it here because I believe that will also give me a dark matter uh, because I'm placing it on a thing. Whenever you cover something up on the board, you get that thing. So I'm going to get a dark matter. And I think because I am next to a hill, I can spend a mana and three Genesi, right? Hero is next to the hill. I can do that. Spend one mana and three Genesi and scorch that in the hill. So I scorch. I'm going to scorch this in hill, and that's going to become my space there. I've scorched it. Uh, 
I gain a hero resource whenever I scorch in a hill. That's pretty handy. And that also does damage to any uh, in that ring range, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, now, I didn't use this benefit to scorch in a hill, but it should it should do a damage to that to that guy. Uh, to this one here. So he's going to go down to 9, and that's going to increase my Lumen rating to 21. Nice. That was not too shabby. Uh, now I want to make sure I prevent the curse. So I'm going to go ahead and spend those three. And you can put the uh, cube on these cards to indicate that you have used the card, um, which is helpful because you can only use a lot of them once. All right. Now, I am next to the hill, and I have a hero. I feel like uh, there was an option. It's not that. Which one your skulls is not that. No, no. Equal to your mana production. Mana attractor is at three. You have to spend three dark matter for that. Uh, a life scroll. Do I have a life scroll? I thought I played a life scroll, but I did not. I don't have a life scroll. I need a life and a chaos scroll to really move forward with that. So I'm kind of at uh, a... I have to be on another hero's outpost to do it. So I'd have to get over here to do that, which is just fine. Um, yeah, so basically I'm at the point where to use this hero resource, I have to do something. I don't have three Gasai. I do have a mana and a Gasai. So I could, in theory, I think I can only use this ability once per round. I don't think I can use it multiple times. Um, and I'm not ready to fight the Seraph yet. I have six um, of these. I'm going to turn five of them in to get a cube. It's a little bit of C. What I have. I don't want to lose that hero resource, but I kind of don't want to just sit back there and just chill. Um, but I don't know what else I can do. After you fight, I mean, one that matters, spend more dark matter, fix an outpost. Um, need. I'd use that. Use that. I am not sure that there's anything I really can do or want to do right now. All right. Now I think that's, uh, we're going to pause there. Which might be my best option. I think I am going to just spend my last hero resource. And gather. I don't like the options, but I'm going to do it. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's going to lead us. Well, let's do our mana cycle. So we'll move that there. We'll move that there. Uh, we're going to get three mana. We're going to gain three mithril. And we're going to get four hero resources. Not bad. And then 21, 24 of the gold. Okay. And we're going to do the next person. And it's going to be uh, this one is going to move. Uh, which one is that? That's the Marduk. And... He is going to move one there, drop a void. He wants to turn this way, boom. He's going to go there, he's going to drop that, and then he can't go forward anymore, so he's going to turn all the way around this way and come back there and Drop out that void wherever he goes. The curse I'm immune to, so I don't have to deal with that. Good looking mice. And it is back to me again. 
Um, oh, I forgot to get the blessing. I need to get the blessing. Now, I feel like I have a card that actually matters. Um, do I have the, the life card yet? No, I have not. Um, for each of your creature tags, gain. And so I need a creature that actually collects creature tags. Spend three dark matter. Dominion genocide. You could mana production. This is probably later game. Um, hmm. Uh, you need five hero tags to even play that. And I have one, two. I don't have an option for getting him. Um, mm. well, I really need a creature. Increase mana production one step. Uh. might be not bad. I think I'm going to go with this one. And sacrifice a scroll. And I don't think you go down things when you sacrifice a scroll. You just you would lose abilities and powers. But I don't know that I need the mithril or the tinker tag here. So I'm going to sacrifice this gift scroll. And uh I'm going to bring my mana production up one step. Uh, see if that can be helpful. I'm going to draw four cards. And let's see. Um, look into the abyss for two hero resources. You can seal a portal next to a hero. It's not bad. Um, I need two hero tags. I have two hero tags. If I have all the requisite information to do that, it's nice. Uh, this one I have to have. It's called looting. Need a hero next to a portal. Convert each of your hero resources into two dark matter. And you can add three artifacts. You may add three artifacts among your scrolls. Huh. I guess that's adding things to the different scrolls that you have. Uh, I don't know that I need that one. Interesting. Allure. Now, this is a life tag for three. Gain one Genesi and may add one creature to one of my scrolls. So that one's kind of handy. I did not get another creature tag, but that would give me a life tag. Spend one gonna sigh and add one creature to one of my scrolls. That could work well with this other one. Plus I get to return a blessing and take a new blessing. Hmm. And gain one gonna sigh. That one's pretty good. I like it. I like all but the looting one. I'm not a big fan of that one. So I'm gonna spend nine and grab those three. Um, all right, let's see here, uh, do I have, I have that, I, I need the life tag more than anything else, um, but I still kind of need a creature out there to really get things going. Um, this one is going to do some damage, which I need to do. And I can dig. Add one to your hand, remove the other two from the game. Okay. Digging is not the best, but maybe I'll grab something that I could use. Um, so let's spend 13. We'll do that. And 
we'll play Look Into the Abyss, uh, which is just a, um, I'm gonna stick that over here because I keep looking for it. We're gonna do that. And we're gonna seal this portal, which is going to do a damage to that uh, to Marduk because he's in that realm still. Uh, so we will do that. And do I get anything else from this one? Um, release two heroes. Uh, yeah. I have to spend two hero resources. So I'll do that. And... Well, I guess I didn't need two hero tags. I just needed two hero resources. And I can dig. So for digging, the way this works is you just shuffle the discard pile. And you're going to draw three cards at random. And get to uh, pick one of them to keep in your hand. And I apologize, the lighting is probably a little worse than it was earlier. Because I have... Uh, this now... It's like 4.30 a.m., so I don't have as the, the sunlight coming in my window. All right, so we have Summer Snow, uh, Base Event is on top of the Void Deck, Pass, All Players Must Pass, and then it's got an end game thing. Huh. The Restless Curse, spend one mana, Hero shares a region with another hero. Well, I kind of am in that region. Um, steal one hero of production from that player and decrease your LR one step. Huh. That one's, I'm in the same region as a hero, so that's probably uh, useful. Um, hero is swallowed by the void, gain one resource of your choice if you dig. And you're going to have to be next to a portal. It does give me a order tag. Um, which, do I need one of those for one of my cards? Um, that gave me that. I thought there was a card I had that required some combination of, uh, Sama for Chaos and Wall Attacks. Oh. Oh. I only need one more life tag than the sum of my Chaos and Law Attacks. I have one. So I need two life tags. I don't need the Chaos tag. It means I didn't need this. I don't need this card the whole time. Huh. Uh, I could have not bought it. I'm just going to give it up for a uh, coin. A gold. And I definitely don't need that. So, yeah, I'm going to go with this one. It's pretty cheap. And keep it. Cost four. I think it's worth it because I'm in the area with my, with another hero. So if I play that, I have to spend a mana. And I lose one LR production, but I gain one hero resource production, which is, I think, helpful enough to warrant doing that. Um, this costs three. I think that's going to be worth it to get a life tag. Um, I'll play a lure. I gain one gonna sigh and I can add one creature to one of my scrolls but I don't have a scroll that takes creatures so I'm not gonna worry about that um, hmm. I probably should spend a mana and three uh, gonna sigh to at least uh, convert one of these in the hill to um, 
to that Scorch in the Hill, which is going to do damage to Marduk and give me another LR rating. Uh, I Scorched in the Hill, so I gain a hero resource. That's my character's ongoing ability. Uh, it's only giving me a few things left. Let's see, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 18, 20, 20. So we got, we have 22. Uh, to get that Centaur's Blades down, I'm going to need to get another life down. Um, and I can do it for 10. So let's me return the blessing and get a Genocide. So I think I'm going to do that as well. Um, okay. Um, yeah, now I have two life tags and I can potentially play this one. 10, 11, 12, but I won't be able to do it this turn. I don't have enough. All right, so I do get to return. I gain one Genesai and I get to return this and pick up a new blessing. So what is going to be beneficial? Well, that that would allow me to get this one out on the table. Hmm. Okay, each of your Vite add one centaur. I don't have a lot of Vite. That would be helpful. But I don't like the idea I don't have as much, but that's okay. Uh, if I do, that gives me two mithril. That's actually worth more uh, than this would be. So I think I'm going to go with this one and gain two mithril. And then I can pay, let's see, that's that's 12 and 13 and I can play this I have one Viete so basically I've got one centaur on that card but now when I play these cards that give me an animal or a creature I have another creature I can put them on which is pretty handy oh did I do that right oh I don't actually now that I think about it, I, I need another life tag that I don't have. So let's get that. Let's get that back. Uh, 12 and 13. I couldn't actually play that one because I don't have, I'm missing a life tag that I really want. Summer Bloom. Cost three dark matter, so probably not doing that. Not doing that. I need one Eternals tag, but I'm not gonna have enough for that. Okay. And five hero tags, which means I gotta play that one first. Huh. Okay. Well, that still wasn't a bad blessing to pick. Uh, I do need to use this to prevent the curse. Uh, where is it? That card there. Um, so I'm going to do that. And I think that is going to do it. How many cards? Hmm. So I need one. Oh, I do have two life tags. There it is. There's my two life tags. Mm. All right. So I could spent 13 and do it which does have one it also means I can spend another decide to add that and we're gonna be able to uh, build up and build bloom Viete a little easier than we would normally all right so I'm gonna stop there and I'm going to do the mana cycle which isn't gonna matter because I'm all tapped out. We're going to do that. Uh, we get 
four mana. Uh, we got that. We get five. Oh, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. I don't want to just not use my hero resources. Um, oh, this is a tough one. I want to be at a place where they can just do damage to me. I think I'm going to use two hero resources to move to here. And then I'll just gather there with my third hero resource. And I'll do that. Uh, so I can get some a little bit to build off of. All right, uh, so that's going to give me five hero resources for there, and then I've got 22, 25. So we're going to get 25. We're going to put this back, and um, it's the one that requires a tag. This one, get two of your eternals tags, gain one of the natural hero production one step. Assumption one gives me a hero tag and builds toward this gladiator one, which could be, it's a possibility. Um, but am I ready for it yet? One creature to one of your scrolls and add one spirit to one of your scrolls. So I'm gonna grab this because it lets me add a creature to that scroll. And I don't have any that spirits would get added, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, we'll go up here, we'll draw a void card, and it is this guy that is going to uh, trigger, is that Moloch? No, this is Hades, Seth, Seth, Seth. Oh, that's a bummer, that's a bummer. So he's going to vanish, and vanishing means he's going to do this number. He's going to pop that down, and then everything around him is going to disappear, like so. And he's going to, he's sending me to the void, which is unfortunate. And then he's going to pop up uh, right here in this area, and just facing that way. So that kind of sucks. Uh, the curse I don't have to worry about because of my card, but I'm gonna have to escape the void. And my LR rating would normally go down, but rather he is gonna heal one is what's gonna happen. Uh, because when my LR rating would go down in solo game, he actually just heals or a, uh, a Seraph would heal. So that kind of was a bummer. Fortunately, getting rid of this stuff is not what is going to win me the game, but I've got to defeat all three of these guys. Whew, and that's going to be tough. I wonder if I'm going to have to get out of here and fight Moloch or something. All right, so let's draw our four cards, see what we get. Um, Monolith of Vain Hope. A base event is on top of the void deck. LP at the end game. I don't know. That just gives me tags, it looks like. A white horse, which is I can spend one Genesai and travel up to three areas. That's not bad. It gives me a hero tag. Um, and increases hero production one tag. That one, that one's pretty good. Give me some stuff to work with. Uh, mining machines need at least three tinker tags. Increase mental production one step. It's not bad. Do I have three tinker tags? One, two, no. I've got two tags. And there's no tinker tags over here to get. Increase mana production seven steps. Seven windows. Well, that would be freaking awesome. Um, 34. 25, 30, I mean, I could do it. I could pull that off. Uh, it would give me lots of mana, and I don't have any dark mana. 
this round to stop the curse, which is a little bit unnerving. Um, hmm. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Wow, that's tough. But that is awfully good mana production. Okay. I'm going to, I am going to pay six for these cards. Uh, five, six. I'm going to do that. Okay. Let's see if any of these others are going to be supremely beneficial to me. Um, need the tag for that. That's not going to happen. Uh,. What are my other things over here? Sacrifice five centaurs from here. Uh, one more of my cards. Uh, Art of War. If you fight me in dark matter, spend one game aside, one creature to one of your scrolls. That I can do. Um, and add a creature there because that's going to be beneficial down the road. So we'll do that. Mm. Plus one in a fight. Haven't used that. I could get two dark matter with that. All right. So the debate is, should I play this? I don't even have anything to use that with. For each creature tag, gain one game of sight and add one creature to one of your scroll. Well, this, this I can pull off now. That is beneficial. Um, so if I pay 11, I think it's going to be worth doing. Um, then for each of my creature tags, gain one gun aside and add one creature to one of my scrolls. So I want to pop that there. And. Uh, creature tags, I have one, two, three, four. For each of your creature tags, gain one this guy. Uh, so I'm going to get four going to sigh. And I'm going to add one creature tag, or creature to one of my scrolls, which is this one. Okay. So for this one, Sacrifice size centers from here and bloom a deity in a region where you already have own a deity, which means I'd have to go here, but that would also do two damage to both to each of the this is both of these seraphs are in that same region. So I should probably use one hero resource to escape the void. Um, so let me just get on the floor there. And we're going to escape the void. And um, I'm going to use another hero resource to move to here. I can bloom a Viete next to me. So I think I am going to... Yeah, I think I'm going to spend these five... Because uh, getting two damage in one is extremely excellent. So I'm going to bloom a VAT there. It is on a place with uh, going to size. So I'm going to get that. And that is, I like that. Um, does anything else happen? Okay, for each of your VAT, one center. All right. Sacrifice five centaurs. Yeah, and that's going to do a damage to uh, Marduk and Set. Uh, so they're going to, he's going to go down to six and he's going to go down to eight. And then I'm going to gain two because of that. Um, hmm. That gives you a little bit of a, a damage to that uh, to Marduk, so they don't like their thing being stolen. But uh, getting rid of Moloch, I think, would have been the hardest bit uh, my last turn trying to finagle that. Well, there you have it. That is Legends of the Void. 
I don't know how easy it would be to find a copy of this game, but if you really, really like Terraforming Mars, if you really like, really like fantasy-themed games, this is probably going to be for you. Uh, if you are kind of like, eh, on either of those things, this might not be for you. But it's rather enjoyable. I'd, I'd probably give it a, um, a, a 6.9-ish rating, maybe a 7 uh, in the 7 to 7.5 range, somewhere in there. Um, I wouldn't mind playing it multiplayer, uh, but I also am not going to chase after playing it either. So I, I like Terraforming Mars better than this one and feel like it's a little bit more balanced in its gameplay. And I like the theme better than the fantasy theme. Uh, I'm not opposed to a fantasy theme, but I kind of like the space theme a little bit more. Um, thanks for joining Unravel Game Thoughts. If you have any comments or suggestions or you notice I made uh, glaring mistakes or uh, cheated in some way that I didn't catch, um, then please point that out. Uh, it's very possible that I made some significant mistakes and I probably will run through the rule book one more time just to see what I might have caught and try to post uh, some text on the screen um, as time goes on. But until next time, thanks for joining Unravel Game Thoughts.